Hello and welcome to the Trial On Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, Denny. Hello. People call him the People's Host. I don't know where that comes from. But anyway, this weekend, huge crackdown on head highs. Before we get into it, and that's all we're going to talk about pretty much, what are your thoughts? My thoughts on the crackdowns? Yeah. Oh, I think I think it was, was crap. Yeah. They, um, I thought the, the, the calls were horrible, and I thought it, it ruined, ruined magic round for me. I thought they took a weekend that they uh, was meant to be for the fans and to kind of um, shine a light on the game, and they made it about himself. Yeah, and I thought it was disgusting. Yeah, hundred percent. Me too. Anyway, well, let's get in. Let's get straight into it. Uh, on Thursday, the governing body issued an edict that they would be cracking down on head highs and uh, repeated ruck infringements. So you know, people lay in the ruck and stuff. Yeah. Which well, I'm not too mad about that. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I think they should be trying to crack down on that. Yep. But the result, the result. 14 players seem been three sent off across eight games. Eight people in the first two games to start Magic Round. Yep. 41,000 people showed up a day. I think it was about 40-odd. And all they seen was referees for days, and it, it was just crap. Um, the three players sent off. That's where we'll start. Josh Papalihi, direct contact with the head. Yeah. Send off? No. <laughs> nah, 10 in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Like, send off. Come on, that's... That's a bit tough. Uh, Terrell Fui Mayono, late and high on Ryan Pappenhausen. That's a send off. You knew he was going. Yeah. And uh, Herman SASA, offside and high. Nah, not a send off. Not a send off. Not a send off. Ten in the bin. I Ten had, in the bin uh, for SASA and, and Papa Lee. Ten in I the think bin. before this round, they're probably two out of three of them are 10 in the bin. Uh, Terrell Fui Mayono's was terrible, I thought. Mm. But because of what we saw earlier in the round, I thought they all had to go. And that's pretty much a theme of what I'm going to talk about because the referees just blow their load. Mm. Like, because they're sending off little things, uh, because they're putting little things in the bin, they have to put these guys off the field and it ruins the game. The game's over. Yeah. Anyway, the sim bins. There was 14 of them. (sighs) Tex Hoy, uh, that was for a leg pull. Joe Offhand Gowie holding down. Lachlan Fitzgibbon holding on. Uh, Moses and Bayer. This was like, as the siren went, that was holding down as well. Mm. And then we go to Friday. One of the lowest tackles I've ever seen be sent off. I've seen binned. Tyson Gamble. Oh, Tyson Gamble. Can you believe that? No, I couldn't. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I didn't even think it was a penalty. There was nothing wrong with it. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they're five meters out from his line, right? He's throwing his body in front of the player. Mm. What you want your halfback to do throwing his body at him the guy already beat one so he was going to go over the, the line if Tyson didn't stop him he gets put in the bin for it I know he'd already been put on the uh, report earlier so I can understand that but Jesus Christ I thought that was a bad one yeah no no good Don't so not a penalty pardon not even a penalty not even a penalty man like 10 in the bin and this is where I'm at they blew their load with that right and then mm. they got to the Jordan Ricky one where he headbutted him and they had to send him as well so now you're sending off two players in a minute yeah but the Jordan Riggy one deserved to go on the bin. Dumb. Like maybe even a little bit more. Like it's yeah. a headbutt. I thought it was dumb. That, that was really, really stupid. Yeah. So that's one they probably got right. Josh Schuster then went for holding on. Lock and Croker holding on. Uh, Jack White and that was like a cannonball. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah. I don't. I didn't. I didn't like it. It was dangerous. So ten in the bin. <laughs> nah. Penalty. Penalty. Ricky come out and said that if Jack White doesn't go in third man then, then he's into him at training. He yeah. said, like, what is he meant to do? Yeah. Uh, Jaden Sewer, uh, head high. I think this was soft as. I don't know if you remember this, but it was a head high. Aaron Woods didn't even go to the ground. Oh, Stakes, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. Stayed standing, played the ball. They went another play. The bunker got in his ear. They went and checked it. Then he got put in the bin. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe that either. And there's another one in that game. Chad Townsend. We're not going to talk about it now. That is the worst call of the entire weekend. Mm. Possibly the year. Yeah. I thought it was disgraceful. But we're going to talk about that. Anyway, Lachlan Burr, uh, direct contact with the head. Um, I thought thought Teddy was falling. Well, you said this. Three weeks in a row now. Yeah. Teddy's been hitting the head. Same action. He's been falling into it every single week. Like, if I'm a coach... I'm telling my players, look, take a little, take a little dive 
a little slip and someone might might brush you on the head. That's automatic 10 in the bin. Mate, James Tedesco is one of the hardest players to tackle in the game. Mm. Like, you just got to get in front of him. And he is slipping and falling late all the time. And this... Now, I know we've got to protect our players, but I don't know what Lachlan Burr could have done. <sighs> yeah. And this is what I mean. There is accidents and incidentals. Like, there's no intent from Lachlan Burr to hit him in the head. No. James Tedesco falls. He goes 10 in the bin. Cowboys get overrun with one less player. Uh, Josh McGuire, direct contact to the head. The ref said it bounced off the ball. It did. And then the commentators even said, yeah, I think it bounced off the ball. And then he got put in the bin. Mate. Don't know about that one either. Uh, and then I think they blew their load a little bit there because he got put in the bin there four minutes later. Terrell Fumayano done one that was way worse. Fumayano? Yeah, he done one four minutes later and then he had to go sent off. Yeah, that's right. But then it compounds that because you've already put one in the bin. Mm. You know what I mean? So now you get the spotlight on you for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, if- Moses Leota was uh, lazy, dumb, and I think he deserved to go. Yeah. He's how I shot. Yeah, hold on. I've, I've just got a, a couple of things to say about the Josh McGuire we were talking about earlier. All right. Right, so he gets sent for 10 for a high shot. He gets sent for 10 in the bin. Yep. So these, his um, punishment for that was a fine. Yeah, because it was... For the it, high shot. It was shit, yeah. And then... He, like, when he comes back on a few minutes after he's on, he does a hip drop. Which was bad. Which was bad. Gets put on a report, doesn't get sent for 10. And his punishment for that is five to seven weeks. There you go. So, I don't I don't understand that. Like, how can you get sent for 10 and the punishment be a fine, but then you get put on a report and the punishment's five to seven weeks? How can you get sent for 10 for the lesser... For the lesser infringement? Exactly, yeah. Like, the hip drop... A hip drop can keep someone out of the game forever. Mm. And... Anyway, so what what do you end up getting that for that five to seven? Five to seven, yeah. Like it makes no it makes no sense that the that the worst crime, let's just say, yeah. call it, gets less punishment it's on like, the field. It's like robbing a bank and getting life in prison, and then murdering someone and getting a couple of years. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's what it's like. Anyway, plea of Landy's coming out. This was about midway through the weekend when they were getting quite a little uh, backlash. Now I've got a couple of things to say about what he said. He said, we want to eliminate any contact above the shoulders. Players will need to adjust just as they did when shoulder charges, crushes, lifting players in the wrong position, amongst other charges, were eliminated. You rarely see those transgressions now. When's the last time you've seen a shoulder charge? On the weekend. Well, apparently, that's what they that, that's what um, Ravalau got charged with, a shoulder charge. When's the last time you've seen a crusher? On the weekend. <laughs> like, seriously, how have they been eliminated? They haven't. You see a shoulder charge every single week in the NRL. Yeah. Every single week. Yeah. And I would argue head highs are more incidental than the shoulder charge. 100%. The shoulder charge is a deliberate act. Like you cock the shoulder, you throw your shoulder in. That's a shoulder charge. Most of the time, players aren't trying to take people's heads off out there. Yeah. Well, we just talked about it with Josh McGuire. He bounced off the ball. Yeah. Come on. I, I couldn't believe that. So... I said, firstly, a player is suspended every week for a shoulder charge, so I don't know where he's getting that from. And you see three or four crushes every weekend. Yeah. So I think that's rubbish. Now he says, the players will need to, adru- to, to adjust <coughs> to this like, new rule. I thought that was crazy. So they need to adjust to that in two days, firstly. Mm. And then he came out and said, no, they were told a week earlier. Well, they've got to adjust to that. They've got to adjust to the six again. And if you're the Cowboys, you've got to come up against possibly one of the best teams in the last decade, the Roosters, and you've got to adjust to James Tedesco. What, what, you've got to think about so much more, but now you've got to make sure you don't hit him like here. Mm. And then the, the, the change in your point of contact, because that's, that's the argument everyone's making, just change your point of contact, like tackle around the legs. Where's your reward for tackling someone around the legs? Yeah. What happens if you tackle someone around the legs in this game? We'll flick it out the back. Or they get a quick play ball. Yeah. So there, there's no reward. You, if you lose the ruck... You lose the game. Yeah. You lose the ruck against South, you get 60 points put on you. Mm. So you, there's no reward to tackle anyone around the legs, so they're not going to do that. And then if you do tackle someone on the legs and someone tries to get in the like in the ruck to slow the play ball down, well, that's a flop. Yeah. You're going to jail now. <laughs> flops, are, flops are in jail. Yeah. I think there's been more fatigue in the game in the last 18 months than ever in history of NRL with these six again. Which has led to more injuries. Which has led to more injuries, which has led to more high tackles because of the fatigue, because people are tired. And you saw with Toss and Grant Gamble, they're just throwing himself in front of players trying to make a tackle. Yeah. Well, even like there was a couple of weeks ago, the Victor Radley on Cam Munster, 
Like yeah. you saw that, that was just a penalty. And he got off with nothing, with exactly. a fine. Exactly. But then you see, like a week later, same thing happens with Dave Fafita and he cops two weeks for that. I, I don't know what they're meant to do. They're all out on their feet. We've sped the game up. We've lessened the interchanges. We've kept the ball in play longer. Mm. And now they want you to tackle every single player around his legs. Yeah, well, they've, them cracking down on the rules, they've wanted to speed the game up. Yeah. Like with the new six again rules and all that. And then they've just slowed it right down. They've done the exact opposite of what they wanted. Well, because the bunker's looking at every single yeah. micro play. That, that could lead us into the Chad Townsend thing. And I don't, I don't swear on it. But Chad Townsend, that penalty was an absolute fucking disgrace. But that's, oh. what, that's what I'm willing to say. I thought it was seven minutes to go. The score was 20 to 16. All right? Yeah. Chad Townsend, Cody Walker scoops the ball up. Chad Townsend, after Cody Walker beats one, Chad Townsend dives on him. Yeah. Cody Walker gets up, right? Plays the ball. We go three plays down the field, and the ref stops the game. There's 26 players on the field. Not one person knew why he stopped the game. Mm-hmm. And they went back and penalised Chad Townsend for a crusher, pressure on the neck. There was nothing there. There's nothing in it. Look, what's your thoughts on that? I thought, like, I've I've been a fan of this game for my whole life. I almost turned the TV off. Yeah. Like, and it's not going to affect people like me because I'm going to watch the game anyway. Yeah. It's going to affect people that aren't in love with the game. You know what I mean? And that are on the fence and they're going to go, you know what? That That's enough for me. Yeah. And turn it off. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, it's like, it's a contact sport and like they they're getting paid so much to like because it is it is dangerous yeah they're, they're they're there to entertain us and if they're not if it's not entertaining anymore there's no point in watching it there's and that's no point I mean. in watching it then they're going to lose a whole bunch of money you you go look at every single highlights package of the, the nrl's ever put together you know what that sunny bill hits on it you're like that it's a big hit isn't it mm. it's the contact yeah the collisions it's, it's the collision and we do have to lessen the direct shot to the, to the head. Mm. Obviously, that's illegal. But head highs, have, head highs have been illegal forever. Yeah. That's okay. That Chad Townsend tackle is not a tackle we're trying to get out of the game. No. That was rubbish. And now, we, we both say, we, we do not say referees cost teams games because I think there's 80 minutes to win a game. I thought it cost them an opportunity to win the game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. With, with what, seven minutes to go, down by four... South get the ball and then kick it down the field and they score that set Cody Walker scores that set game mm. over I thought it was just gross it, would, it, it really really annoyed me uh, Braith and Asta was ropeable on the call I I didn't know what to make of it mm. it, it really really hurt me well I think that the, them like sending off and sin bidding like a lot of those shots that is potentially costing teams games because they're down a man yeah. for either 10 minutes or the rest of the game for something that should only just be a penalty. Well, th- even with the St. George one, they went down to 11 men after 10 minutes. Mm. And I messaged Tori. I said, don't don't bother talk- putting the game on. Yeah. And Melbourne are just going to smash them now. And it probably robbed us of what was going to be a good game. Yeah. Which I, th- I think Fui Mayono had to go, but the Josh Maguire one... I should know about that. Like that, that kills the game. It's over. You yeah. you you need thirteen on thirteen if you're going to play Melbourne. Yeah. And I I just don't know. I I hate it. I hated every bit of it. They said that um, Valandi's come out and said hopefully they calibrated a little bit and they don't overreact to every single call. But it was your directive, mate. Yeah. You're the one that come out and told them to do it. Mm. And I I want to I want to specify this is not the referee's fault. The referee, it's not their fault. They were told to do it. They're they're just the employee. Yeah. It's the game's fault. Mm. And I was getting constant messages from you all weekend saying, what is this? Yeah. What are we watching? Yeah. I mean, we're both all for um, player safety and health and all that stuff. Yep. But I mean, come on. Like some of those... Co- like sometimes the player was like... They got like a little tap in... Sometimes it wasn't even like a head high or nothing. Like you saw that tackle on Bryce Cartwright. Did I not ring you? You weren't even watching. I rang you and I said... Did you just see that? Yeah. yeah. And I, I made sure you went and watched it. Bryce Cartwright did not get touched with any part of the body in the head yeah. at all. And it was a penalty. It's like up, up around the shoulders, like up here, like wrapped around there. And like, if you just do this and then just like stop for a little bit. I know. Bloody penalty. And we saw, we saw the backlash from players too. Players were coming out uh, after the first game. I think Harry Grant, Brandon Smith, <coughs> uh, a couple of other players coming out and said, what am I watching? This is the game I fall, I fell in love with. Yeah. 
I think there there is a happy medium. We have to protect the players and protect the game. Yeah, without like without the fans, there is no there, exactly. there is no game, and you, you're taking away something that the fans enjoy. A hundred percent. The contact. It's the contact. It's and they already took away the shoulder charge, and I think. And that had to go, especially when they're making contact with the head, okay? The shell charge didn't have to go. No, no, but where, where it was at, every single tackle was hitting the head and it was causing concussions, right? But if if they if the shell charge was in and you weren't making co- contact with the head, I wouldn't mind it. But there it still has to be some degree of contact. If we're going to change it to if you hit above the chest, like what, what's, what's the game anymore? How do you control the ruck if you tackle anywhere below the hips? Tell me that. I don't know. You can't. Even when we played, we were taught to hit the ball. Always hit the ball. Yeah, and then third meaning, wrap up the legs. Yeah, hit first, the ball. First and second, wrap the ball up. 100%. you got to wrap the ball up, and then you just work from there, and yeah. then you control the ruck. And the whole game, NRL is all about the ruck now, yeah. especially with the six agains. I don't know, bro. I, I, I hated it. I really hope they have a look at it this week. And just, just don't blow your load straight away. Like... Mm. There's, on the, the softest things, man. There's going to be other ones. There there are bad ones. There is a place for the sin bin. I think the send-off is so absolute, but you probably need that as well. And if they're going to start sin bin and people for nothing, you might as well bring back the punch. Yeah. Get, yeah. get sin bin for a real reason. Yeah, and I don't like penalising when the third man comes in around the legs. Like yes, yeah, unless, unless it's dangerous. Unless you're attacking the knee. Yeah, like a, a cannonball. Like Jack yeah. Whiten's one was, you know... Probably a penalty. Yeah. But he got sent for 10, did he? He got put in the bin. Yeah, that's not 10 in the bin. And then I remember one in the Eels-Warriors game where Mitch Moses, yeah. he just dived in around the leg, third man in, and it's a penalty. So no consistency. Yeah. What they've done, though, they made it black and white. They said, if this happens, you're going to go in the bin. There's got, there's got to be discretion. There's bad head highs, and there's, like, accidental yeah. well, clips. Well, even... They didn't even send all the head highs to the, to no. the bin. Like, there's still head high. There'd be about ten players in the bin if they called every head high, and, and uh, not so they don't call it. They sent everyone to the bin. The way they tried to back it up too, they said um, by the end of the round. Oh, did you see how less, how like how many less head highs there were by the end of the round? There's not like fifty head highs a game every week, is there? No, no. There's there's a couple, and you sent every single one, pretty much everyone to the bin in the first few games, mm. and then because the amount of backlash you. They're like, okay, well, let's settle down a bit. There was eight in the first two games, and what there was the first six. Night. The first, the first night. Well, there was eight on the first night, yeah. and then there was six over the rest of the round. Plus, you got some send offs there. Yeah, well, you got six. three. So yes. no, nine sim bins or send offs for the rest of the round. The the eight on Friday was just it was everyone was blowing up. The oh, especially oh, what's his the name? Gamble, Gamble one. Gamble. Oh. Man, that was woeful. I thought the Chad Townsend one, it was as bad as I've seen on the field. A penalty. That was really, really bad. In the context of the game, too. Yeah, probably Yeah, probably the worst penalty we've seen. This year? ever? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say ever, because there's probably penalties out there that have been pretty low. Like what? I remember when I refereed, just tangenty, I refereed soccer, and I gave, oh. um, I gave a dot shot for someone that tripped over the ball. <laughs> <laughs> just so that that's probably the worst penalty ever but anyway that's probably let's, why you don't ref soccer anymore mate yeah <laughs> anyone out there that has any thoughts on this if you agree with it if you don't agree with it let us know because this is not the game that I fell in love with especially this weekend and especially Magic Round it was for the fans mm. it was a showcase for Rugby League and they really stole that from us let's get in the games alrighty straight into the games mate so we got the Tigers versus the Knights Tigers won that one 36-18 uh, this game could have gone either way. Like, to start the game, I didn't know who to tip. Ended up tipping the Knights. Bad luck for me. Um, but you said last week you wouldn't be surprised if either of these teams won by 20. And yeah. you are pretty much spot on there. Yeah, average, um, average. Uh, what is it? Margin, nine and a half or something this week. Average winning margin. Yeah. Uh, I went to Tigers because Pong was out. Oh, that's Rocks, right, yeah. The Rocks and Diamonds Titans turned up Diamonds in this one. I think they scored in the first five minutes, so... Yeah. Did Dewey get a hat-trick? Dewey, I think he did get a hat-trick. Yeah. I don't know. Madge, they, they asked him about it late in the week, and Madge said he's playing really good at 5'8". We're going to put him at centre because we don't have a centre, and hopefully he can play really good there. So well, he did. That's his. That was his thinking behind it. Pretty so simple thinking. Was it a masterstroke from Madge? <laughs> yeah, I, 
I don't I don't give the Tigers too much credit until I see what they how they play next week. So we'll see how they play next week. Yeah. It's the Fortnite Tigers. Yeah. Well hopefully uh they can they can back it up with another good Yeah, performance. hopefully they can. It's always good to see teams that are struggling, you know, play well. What about the Knights? They're struggling. Well, yeah, we'll hope that they can win next week too. Yeah, well, let's 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 hope everyone wins. <laughs> yeah, everyone, it's all draws next week. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, on to Manly versus Brisbane. Manly beat Brisbane fifty points to six. Uh, Turbo, killing it. He's oh, been in everything it. since oh. he's been back. He's been in everything. It's disgusting how well he's playing. Yeah. So I got a question for you. It's just just a sim- just a singular question. So if Tommy Bray is healthy, are Manly a top four side? And if they are, or if they aren't, sorry, who are the sides that are better than him, better than them? You think? I don't think they're a top four side. I think you got Penrith, yep. Para, Storm, South. I think that's your top four. South. Yeah. I think South. Are, I don't know. They've been struggling of late. They've lost two games. Both have been to Melbourne. So chill. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this was nil all for a long time. This game. I thought the, the Broncos just couldn't. Every time that they would defend, then they'd drop the ball. They'd defend, then they'd give away a penalty. They just couldn't get out of their own end. Mm. And the the crowd was behind them. Everything was right there for them to, you know what, make a stand. And they just couldn't do it. Toss and gamble, crazy try-saver um, early in the game. I thought that was just unbelievable. And the way he reacted after that try-saver, I thought, you know what, the Broncos are a red-hot chance here tonight. Yeah. Then insert Tommy Turbo, 15 oh. minutes in, scores, game over. He scores two tries, two try assists, uh, one line break, four tackle breaks, 175 metres. Just an average day for him, really. Well, he got an early mark, so... Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's, he's it's pretty poor. Yeah. Pretty poor? Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought... I got two two points here. I thought Cherry Evans was outstanding. Mm-hmm. I thought he played a really good game of footy. Also, do you have Saab in your origin conversation? Is he in New South Wales? Yeah. No. No, but I mean, like, he's not... Like, he's pretty good, and he's pretty safe. Big, rangy winger. That's the perfect origin mould there. He's good under the high ball. He's good. He's a good target in attack. Uh, probably uh, the Daniel Tupo ilk. And he's he's fast, man. You Would you put him there? No, well, not this year, but he's definitely an origin winger, like, in the making. I don't know. Is he Is, is he tough enough? He seems like a bit See, of that's, a softy. That's gonna be that's gonna be the argument. But like, I'd be scared if I was Queensland and he was back there for them. If he was, if if they're kicking bombs to who who were they? Wing with Dan Gagai? Yeah. It, no, you, you said Val and yeah. Well, he knows. he's leaping over Val. Yeah, maybe even Xavier. Yeah, Xavier's gonna. That's what I'm worried about. If he's picked Toho, Xavier coming at Toho. Yeah. That could that could be a mismatch in the air. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. I think Saab's been great this year on the back of um, Tommy. Uh, maybe not know. this year. I wouldn't have him in this year, but he's definitely... He's a winger of the future. Yeah, maybe next couple no, of years. Another one the Dragons let go. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, on, to the, on to Saturday. We got the Raiders defeating the Doggies 20 points to 18. I don't know how the, the Doggies lost this one. They were up by, what, a couple... They, they were, what were they up by? Only up by like what four? Four, I think. When they went down to eleven. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they couldn't they, get it done. They weren't looking too bad. They they looked good until then. Yeah, but then they just couldn't. They just, just couldn't ice it. But, I yeah. I couldn't believe what I was watching when they lost Whiten and Papa Leahy. I thought the game was over. Yeah. And um, then they signed, kind of found something. The Raiders. Well, I remember there was this one point in the game where they were down to twelve men. Yeah. And the doggies still had thirteen. And somehow they still, yeah, they still figured they, yeah, they um, they were down to twelve men and they managed to get a three on two on the right edge. Isn't that crazy though? That just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it like how you down one man and you find an overlap. The the math doesn't add up there for mine. It doesn't. Um, no, but they did. It looked like they found some steel when they went down to twelve men. You know what I mean? Like yeah. backs against the wall. Like the team got together a little bit, and I, I hope they did because they got no Papa, no Whiten, and no Hodson next week. So they they better have found something. Who they got? Who they got next week? Does it matter? I'll I'll quickly have a look, mate. Well, they got they got Storm. <laughs> oh, well, Storm don't have Harry Grant, Cam Munster. Maybe maybe just rest next week. Yeah, yeah, just rest it. Yeah, well, let's go. Uh, righty, the Bunnies beat the Sharks 30 po- 32, Sorry, to twenty two. Sharks were hard done here. 
You know, I'd, I'd be say. very disappointed and, you know, maybe even a little bit angry if I was a Sharks fan with, with that call from Chad Townsend for the ease. Would, would you tackle. say that's probably one of their best performances of the year? The Sharks? Yeah. Uh, Especially in the second half. I thought they, all right. they, they give up 20 straight points in the first half, which kind of hurt them, but I thought they looked really good in the second half. And mm. Their centers are terrible. Dugan and Chambers. Chambers yep. got snapped in half every time he ran the ball. Yeah. And Dugan's like a passenger out there for one. Mm. Well, they're, they're missing Jesse Ramian. He's yep. he's one of the edge strikes. Yeah. Edge, edge strike weapons there. I think I think they need just go younger. Yeah. Just bring well, in some kids, I reckon. Well, you'd think about it. If bloody old mate Bronson yeah, Sherry yeah. didn't get done for doping or whatever. And he, have, he was their future. Yeah, they'd have Bronson Sherry there mm. and Jesse Ramian, who yeah. are two gun centers. Definitely. Um, instead, they've got two has-beens. Poor Chambers. I, I don't know if he's not fit or something, but every time he ran the ball, he got smashed. You have not? Well, I, I, I don't rate Chambers at all. Well, he, used, he at one point, he was probably the best centre in the game. He was good. Yeah. He was the Australian centre. Yeah. <laughs> was that, so that means he's best in the game, doesn't it? No. No, there's plenty right. of other centres better than him. Um, Latrell Mitchell is back, is back next week for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, who have Penrith, I think. Yep, Penrith. Which, what a game. What night's that? Sunday. Sunday, 2 p.m. That'd be good. Day game, too. No, I think the Panthers got to flog them. No, but it'll, it'll be... Yeah. Oh, no, it'll be a good game. Who, who's South still missing? Murray and Campbell Graham. Yeah. Oh, it'll be a good game. I think Penner will win, but... I think Reynolds was out, too. Reynolds. No, Reynolds is in. Reynolds is played in? on the weekend. Did he? Yeah. I thought he was out for like a month or something. No, nah, he's back, bruh. Okay. He's back. Okay. He's back in the game. All right, anyway, we're uh, on to the next game. The Roosters defeat the Cowboys 30 points to 16. Uh, Cowboys played great in patches. Yeah. And then they kind of just fell apart in, in the other patches, I guess. It's the story of their year. They're just defensive issues all over the park. I think if they can fix their defense, there's enough good signs everywhere else, mm. I think. Do you think? I think so. I think Josh Drinkwater had a really good game. Oh, he's good. he's so good. He's been playing really well the last few weeks. Uh, Val, he was he was all, he was decent at the back there. Mate, I know I stuff up names a lot, but you just called him Josh Josh Drinkwater. Josh. Yeah. What's his name? Scott Drinkwater. Where did I get Josh from? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Josh Drinkwater. Um, jo- it sounded good. Josh. It took me a second. I was like, Josh well, no, Drinkwater. that's his name from now on, Josh. All right, Joshy boy. Joshy boy. <laughs> um. No, I think they have enough there. That's why I didn't think they had to go recruit too much. I think there's enough there that if they can just if they can just fix their defense. I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. Jordan McLean. I thought he was terrible on the weekend. I think he's been pretty poor most of the year. They've, they've, they have scrapped the uh, fourth tackle hit up. The master stroke. They've scrapped. They've scrapped that. No, I saw. I saw him on fourth <laughs> tackle. He, he did have a hit up on fourth tackle. It's not gone. Yeah. Did, did he find? Did he find his front? Or I think he might have actually. Yeah. yeah. Is he still a starting front rower in this competition? Well, I've never rated him. Yeah. I remember when he got first time with the Cowboys. I was like, no, nah, it's not a very good signing. And you were like, yeah, he's mad. It's Jordan McLean. And well, you know, I try and be high energy about me, boys. Yeah, you do. But I just don't, I don't rate him. I don't anyway. Rate him at all. Uh, the goat Javon Bowden went over in this one, by the way. Javon, he went over. He's your he's your best mate. Yeah, he's got to be. All right, next game. <laughs> uh, righty on to the game of the round. Para beat the Warriors thirty four points to eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Para they started the game really well. They scored like what, four tries in a row or something like that. And then insert Reese Walsh. As soon as he comes onto the park, the Warriors look like the better team. Yeah, and he was by far the best player on the field. Um, he's got to be playing 80 every week. I think Roger came out and said he doesn't have a problem with Reese playing fullback. He's got to start. Has so to start. I, you got to keep Roger at fullback. Put Reese at six. And they played Nick Arima at nine a couple yep. weeks ago. I reckon... Just do that. Yeah, just do that. All right. I don't mind that. I, I just think as long as Reese is in the team, I'm happy. Uh, I thought Mitchell Moses gets slept on big time. I thought he's great in this mm. game, especially mm. with an inexperienced half outside him. I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, thought he controlled the game. And if you watch, he he went both sides of the ruck. He went, he played both sides of the field a fair bit. And I think he's playing really good. I think Andrew Johns has been great for him. Yeah, he's gonna re-sign with Para. I think give him two years, like they could have a premiership down there. Oh, this year, 
mate, even this year. No, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I think they're a red hot chance. They've, their team is so well balanced. I don't like them giving up 18 points to the Warriors. Mm, me neither. But a win's a win. Jacob Arthur's on debut. He was all right. He crossed late. That's my only thoughts on the game. Reese Walsh is yeah. a good-looking man. He is a very good-looking man. He's very good good at footy. But more importantly, he's a good-looking man. He's a good-looking man, but he's I think he's got a missus. Oh, Spion. Yeah. Unlucky. Unlucky. Won't last. Yeah. No. We'll get in there. Yeah. Well, I'll get in there. We'll both. No, I think he likes he likes okay. my build a little bit more. <laughs> okay, go. Okay. Move on. Reese, yeah, Reese, if you're watching, comment, uh, you like Bo's build or my build a little bit better? Come on, Reese. I'll give really good kisses. Anyway, uh, next game, Storm defeat the Dragons. 44 points to 18. Uh, Paps went down early from his, from that late shot from Fumono. And yep. Nico Hines, I thought, had a really good game. Um, started at uh, five eight, got a got a head knock early, came yeah. back on and was one of the better players on the field. I thought he's great. He's, he's awesome. off contract. Yeah, I know. I, can you believe he's mm. off contract? Like someone has to go sign him. I think Dragons. Yeah. Don't resign Dufty, please. And you know, go after Nico Hines I if love, you really want a fullback for the future. I love that you look at the camera as if like Anthony Griffin's watching. He might be. Like you, one, you were talking to Reese Walsh a second ago. Now he's clicked off. Griffin's clicked on. Yeah, Griffin. Anthony. Come on. No, we're on a first name basis. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Tony. But Tony. Tony. Yeah, that's short for. Oh Anthony. yeah, Tony. Um, <laughs> I think that I think the Broncos will sign him. Eh? I think the Broncos will sign Nico Hines. You reckon? Yeah, I think it'll be a good um, him and Adam Reynolds, and then you've got insert a five eight. I don't know whoever you want at five eight. Would have loved to have Dearden at five eight. <laughs> and then you go Asako to the wing. Uh, no, I know. I thought he was great too. Um, the game was over before it started. When it went to eleven men and then twelve men for the rest of the game, yeah. I thought that there's no way the Dragons are winning the game. They managed to play some okay football. I thought the Dragons in patches, but the Storm were never losing this. No, never. No. Anyway, the last game of the round, Panthers beat the Titans forty point forty eight. Sorry, to twelve. Panthers ten in a row. Uh, they've only lost two games in the past two seasons. Where's the Titans Warriors? Where's the um? Where's the Titans top four hope? Gone. Titans are gone. What do you mean? There was never a Titans top four hope? No, the people out there think the Titans are world beaters. Oh, no. Oh, by the way, um, I did have for the Dragons, hashtag gone. They're gone. For the year? Yeah, they won't be making the eight. For mine. Um, Nathan Cleary was outstanding in this game. He was. I think he's... He was. He's just so good. Um, I think... It, they, were, they went to 12 men, didn't they? Yeah, the Titans. But it was already 24-0 before that. Like, 24 nil, mm. And then they went to 12 men, and then, it, what did it end up? 48-12. 48-12, yeah. Um, the Titans, their defense is absolutely broken. It is broken. They're, they're, they've given up at least 28 <coughs> points every week in the last five weeks. Like, that's... Yeah. And they've only been winning games because they they've been scoring more. They're, but, like, they're not in the top eight. I, I'm sorry. they they got so many defensive de- deficiencies. Them, the Cowboys, must be... And the Broncos. But it must be a Queensland thing. <laughs> yeah, um, and the Panthers go ten and zero, and that's the first team to do that since nineteen ninety six. Ninety six. Who, who did it in ninety six? Uh, the, the Roosters, and he uh, Ivan Cleary played for him. Ivan Cleary. Yeah, you love that. Yeah, you do. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week's episode. I went eight from eight this week, so let's go. Um, we'll be back here on Wednesday, Denny, Fine Man Dan. You'll be here. The people's the people's host. Yeah, we'll see. You'll be here. We'll see. And we'll give you all our tips. We'll do our Q&A. So get in your, all your questions. If you want to know anything about head highs, we're your experts. Check out all our other social medias. We'll leave the link to in the bio, and we'll see you Wednesday. Thanks, guys.